apprehensive, very expectant, but of course very tense because uh, it's, it's always tense. We, no, none of us knew what the result was. The number of votes received by comrade Thabo Mbeki, 1,505. And there was a section of the hall which erupted. Can I move on, please? And then she asked them to be quiet and then said, Jacob Zuma. The number of votes received by comrade Jacob Zuma, 2,349. And of course, there was an eruption. And I was part of that eruption. As we come out of this conference, no one has won, no one has lost, the ANC has won. We cannot have a Zuma camp or an ANC or Mbegi camp. There is only one ANC, and I accept the mandate you have given us with a full understanding that you can withdraw it at any time. It was interesting that Zuma didn't sing Shinuan at Bulukwani when he finished uh, his acceptance speech. It came from the floor. He had already left the podium, and the comrades who were next to him forced him back up and pushed him back to the microphone to go and see. And he sang it with a passion that was painful to watch. If now put you right. Don't be ashamed of singing shit one to the world. Then he sang. Oliver Tambo, Lala Mokol. And I think a lot of people missed the symbolism of that choice of song. He was saying, the legacy you gave us, Owar, is alive and well and safe. Meaning, the digression we almost took, where we'd give the ANC to the elites, that rail was shut down. The idea that uh, Polakwana, the pro-poor policy people, won is one of those historical imaginative leaps which has no basis in fact or truth. Nothing of the kind happened there. I mean, it was a displacement, a displacement of one group of people uh, who took part in the enormous role they played in the struggle, liberation, and the reconstruction of South Africa, and displaced, they were displaced by another group of people. That's all that happened in Polokwane. Polokwane was no longer about the dream and the policy for which the ANC had fought long and hard. It was about the interests of the struggle heroes who today are the country's political elite. <laughs> Zuma had won a decisive victory, but instead of celebrating, he immediately came under attack from the media. Once again, his legal problems stole the limelight. Well, Mr. Zuma, let me be the first from our ranks to congratulate you. Well done. Difficult question, first question. The NPA says it's ready to charge you. What is your reaction? Are you looking forward to your day in court? A journalist says to me, what is your response about the, the uh, charges that have been made to you today? I said, what charges? I said, first time I hear, I can't comment. I'll close that bridge when I get there. Are you surprised by the announcement that they made, that they're announcing publicly that charges are imminent? No, I don't think I would want, I would like to engage that issue. Maybe I should add 
they were rushing, they did not even go for holidays so that they can charge me. And they could not even tell my lawyers that they are charging me. They deliver the papers in Johannesburg to the bodyguards at the gate, like here. Boop. When must I appear in court? They say, no, 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 we are charging you now, but we'll appear in court at the end of the year. I think I have a problem with that. It leaves deep suspicion. The power struggle between the two men did not end at Polokwane. Although Zuma had won the presidency of the ANC, the key roles within the government of South Africa remained in the hands of Mbeki loyalists. Zuma's supporters worried that they could use state institutions to block him from ascending to the country's top job. The number of people who supported Mbeki when he lost made wild statements that they will go on campaigning for him at the next conference. And then they were reminded that, listen, chaps, in the tradition of the ANC, you debate, you battle it out, policies are adopted, you now still spend your time implementing those policies. On the face of it, the unity of the ANC was safeguarded. But Zuma's fervent supporters, the ANC Youth League, 